Look at what we're doing to these old countertops. We're making them look like polished marble. In this video, we're gonna show you exactly how we do this step by step. We're gonna retrofit this old laminate countertop for an undermount sink cutout. We're also gonna show how to repair and prep seams in laminate countertops. We'll show you how to demo your old countertops and extend them to whatever size you wish. Learn about the tools and tips to prep so you have a great project without a mess. In a few easy steps, you can take your old laminate countertops and turn them into a showpiece. Our products are easy to use to get professional results. Our epoxy is heat resistant, scratch resistant, it's zero VOC and eco-friendly. Visit us anytime at StoneCoatCountertops.com and enjoy the video. And to Alaska, you ready buddy? StoneCoat <laughs> countertopping it up. Here we go. Guys, we're here in North Pole, Alaska. We're gonna go meet Carlos, the entrepreneur, and we're gonna show you how to do stone coat countertops over old laminate countertops with backsplash included. We're gonna leave the backsplash on and we're gonna make it look like marble. Let's go. Hey guys, Mike here with StoneCoatCountertops.com. Today, we're in North Pole, Alaska, and I'm with Carlos, the entrepreneur. All right, we got a good project today. We're actually gonna do laminate countertops. We're gonna cover them. We're going to make it look like black marble and we have integrated backsplash. What are your thoughts? How are we going to get started? I'm excited to take the existing sinkhole, cut it out, and because uh, we had a drop in. Right. And we're going to replace it so that we can use our undermount without having to make a new top. So let's show them right now. We're going to show you how to take an uh, old top mount sink and make it into an undermount sink and use your old laminate countertops. Does that sound impossible? It's not. It's not. Let's do this. We're going to start by measuring the length and width of our cutout. We'll take a piece of MDF and we'll cut that to size according to our measurements. We'll square the radiuses off of our old sink cutout so that our new square will fit just right. Remove any of the old silicone sealant so that you get a great bond with your new sink cutout. Be sure to dry fit the new cutout so you get a great snug fit. So I went an inch from here, right dead center. So I keep it dead center with the cabinet, not the window. The window's never dead center with that cabinet. Oh, that's a pro tip. Yep, okay. because then if, you're, if your sink is dead center with the window, it's going to be kicked to one side. You may run out of cabinet to get it centered. Just confirm your measurements with your template to your sink to make sure everything's going to have a good fit in the end. Pull that radius. With a nice sharp blade, make sure you cut your template out really clean. Is there a rule of thumb on your top? Set back in the front. Four and a half inches typically from your inch and a half overhang to the start of your sink cutout is, okay. your, is, your, is your typical. But you got to make sure on a windowsill that's sticking out far that you got room for faucet, that you know where that handle has to go. And, don't, and if you can leave room, leave it back here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you don't want this too skinny where it snaps on your way to the job or, or something like or that. Or the front of the sink can't push close enough and now it doesn't match up. Can I see right. what can happen? Can I, oh, yeah. there we go. That's why this, got numbers this part on. is you know, so you know that... critical. I mean, there's, there's so many, it's finesse is the yeah. key I'm gonna go measure that. Stuff. I'm going to measure what you have there. We'll trace our template on our MDF and get ready to cut that out. Just follow those lines and you'll have a great cut. We like to save the line and keep that pencil line so that we can always sand to it to get our cut just right. Now we're ready to use our random orbital sander and sand out any saw marks that we may have left behind. Just take your time, don't get your sink cut out of whack. We're going to use 220 grit sanding disc in the corners by hand and then we'll also add a little bit of a bevel with a random orbital sander so that our epoxy will flow over the edge really nice. You can also use a 1 8 inch router bit for this. Any place moisture may come in contact like at a dishwasher or an undermount sink, we like to add a waterproof sealant. With some caulking and a brad nailer, we'll attach some wood so that we can then attach our new cutout and it'll support it very strong. We like to leave a gap at the rear of the sink in our supports where we're going to drill those faucet holes. When attaching our new sink cutout, we always use adhesive. 
Check out the perfect fit. Nice. Dude, that's sick. That's so cool. <laughs> Be sure to double check everything and always dry fit that sink. Carlos, what's next, man? Okay, so first up, you gotta make sure you clean your laminate. Uh -huh. Okay, so when you put on your Bondo, that it adheres. Okay, you nice. Know, and, and the key is get it nice and clean. Right, you don't want any residue, any grease, grime, dirt. Clean that off and we're ready for the Bondo. It all makes a big difference. Yes, sir. You know, put in the extra prep, you're gonna be happy with it. Let's get it, let's get it done. Let's get it done. Gotta sweep these decks off too. There. Clean your countertops well, wipe them off, and then we use a random orbital sander with 60 grit to rough these laminate countertops up. Be sure to take care of those seams and get rid of any high point. Go over the entire surface, including the backsplash, and just rough it up. Also, you're going to be sure to clean and wipe the dust after you've sanded. Now it's time to use our all-purpose Bondo, and we're gonna fill the crack between the new seam cutout and the old countertop. This is gonna hide that seam completely. This is the secret in doing an undermount sink cutout in an old laminate countertop. We're gonna do multiple coats of Bondo as we work this sink. Your first coat's not gonna look so good. Sand in between. You're gonna apply your second coat, and just do this until the cutout is nice and smooth. We're gonna do that same process on all of the seams. You don't need your Bondo to look perfect. You're gonna sand it so it's nice and smooth. Just get out any ridges as you can and any little nail holes or pot marks, you're also gonna Bondo those. Here we're using a chisel to get rid of any high points and we'll come back and sand those smooth before our next coat of Bondo. Doing a few skim coats of Bondo is much better than one thick coat. It also gives you better results and easier application. When you're all done getting that new sink bondoed in, it's gonna look really good. It'll look as if it grew in the hole. Now we'll mask off the wall so that we can use a painter's caulking to fill the gap between the wall and the old countertops. After filling this gap, just use your finger and a glove to tool that caulking and you'll get a great joint. We peel our masking and give that caulking an opportunity to dry. We're going to show you how to extend this countertop. We're going to use Bondo. You'll never know we extended it, and it's going to look like it was always that way. It's going to be crazy. Let's do it. Yeah. On this project, our customer wanted us to extend the back and the side of this island to make a bigger overhang. And that was simple. All we had to do is take a 2x4, we ripped it to size, and we screwed a couple of strips on that, and we hid the seams with that same Bondo. It's as simple as that, and it looks like a million bucks when you're done. You'll never know that you added on to this countertop. When prepping the kitchen and masking off so that we don't get epoxy on anything that we don't want it on, first we're going to use blue painter's tape. We'll go through the perimeter and we'll tape everything off with blue painter's tape because it has an easier release than a white painter's tape. We'll also follow the perimeter above the backsplash and then we're ready for our 3 mil plastic. This plastic is great to protect your cabinets from epoxy. Just simply use white painter's tape to stick that onto your cabinets. To protect the walls, our favorite tool is a handy masker. This protects all the surrounding areas so that you don't make a mess. It's simple and fast to use. Check that out. Another trick that we do is use Tyvek tape. We'll tape it underneath our laminate countertop. We'll squish it really tight and then we'll use our razor knife to cut it to size. This allows quick release of those bubbles throughout your project. Spray those countertops and wipe them down one final time for the next step. All right, we're clean, we're sanded, we got everything ready for our bonding primer. The bonding primer is important over laminate countertops because that's what makes everything stick to that smooth, hard, non-porous surface. So we're going to apply that bonding primer. Do we need a thick coat? You don't. No. Uh, thin to win. Yes, <laughs> thin to win. We're going to apply that bonding primer thin. Watch it right now. This is an easy process. You just need our bonding primer a chop brush, and a weenie roller. We're gonna pour a little bit of bonding primer out and we're gonna roll that on those countertops. Each eight ounce jar of our bonding primer will cover 30 square feet. Again, thin to win, you don't need a thick coat here. 
you can roll the edges in the surface and just use that chop brush to brush out those backsplash areas. This step doesn't take long, just make sure you let it dry before your next coat. Okay, we got the bonding primer down. We're now going to apply the paint and primer in one in black. You can go to Home Depot, get bare paint and primer in one, say, I want it tinted in Broadway. What color will it be? It'll be black. That's you know? right. <laughs> so the black is actually perfect for the marble that we're going to make because it's a perfect back backdrop. Then we're going to take that Montana marble spray and that'll be coming up. Let's go do the paint and primer in one right now. We're going to apply two coats of paint and primer in one in black. Just simply roll that on the same way that you did the bonding primer. Brush that vertical backsplash and roll the surface and those front edges. The first coat will be somewhat transparent. You'll see imperfections, but that second coat will hide everything and create a solid black surface. And don't worry, you can do this in any color that you wish. It works just the same. After rolling those edges and applying our second coat, we're ready for the next step. All right, Carlos, we've got a lot of work done, man. Uh, what we've done is we've used our bonding primer and our paint primer in one. We did one coat of bonding primer. We let that dry. We did two coats of paint primer in one. Was that hard, man? Not too hard. Not too hard. Pretty easy. You've done this a couple times, I right? <laughs> so what we're going to do now is we're going to do our Montana marble spray. This is a very fun effect, but less is more. We're actually going to stay far back, right? What have you found using this spray? What do you like to do? So less is more. You know, you can always add more if you need to do it. Um, and, you know, be kind of here. And then if you got to work your way in rather than work your way out. Right, because you'll get a big blob where you don't want it. Exactly. Cool. And keep your hand moving. Get your hand moving as that can sprays out. That's the key. We, we tried this on a practice board. Uh, we showed this uh, off and we kind of made a game plan. So have a practice board, test it first. And then it's time to have some fun. Are you ready for this? I'm so excited. All right, so I'm going to do this part right here, and then I'm, I'm passing the can off. We're going to start out with just white, and then we also have silver, and we have black. We're going to try a few different colors, and we're going to make this black plain countertop turn into something fancy. We're going to liberate these countertops. Yes, <laughs> let's do it, man. Let's go. Who sent you Montana Marble Spray, bro? The Stone Coat Countertop. Yes, they did. We're going to do Montana Marble Spray right now. Stay tuned. Hold on because it's exciting, Ooh, right? It's going to be awesome. How do you do it? What should we hit first? The edges, the top, the middle? What should you do? Stay tuned to find out. How about that? <laughs> do the edges. <laughs> okay, here we go. So I'm going to test the spray right here. Okay, I know how it's coming out of that for the cabinet. So here we go. Oh, I love how that, see how that grabs came over the corner? That's really cool. Let's do this part. Boom. Nice. What do you think, Carlos? It's looking good. Do your edges first, right? You don't want bald spots on the edges too bad. And we'll, we'll break the cobwebs after they're dry, too. That's really good. Yeah. Nice. I'm making my grain kind of this way, too. See what I mean? Yeah. There it is. Well, I'm going to put a little bit right there. Okay, you're up. Nice. You get, see the grain going that way? Totally. And he's going to follow that grain too. Tip of the day, this is really important. When you are doing integrated backsplash, this is such a great technique because you're putting your color on first and your color is not going to run down that vertical surface. So this is going to make this old laminate countertop come to life because we're pre-doing the backsplash. I'm going to do that right now and you'll finish it up, all right? Yeah, all right. This is a very easy, repeatable effect with this can of marble spray. It's a blast. I'm gonna put a little bit more there and oh. then it'll start to match. I think that's a healthy amount. Yeah, that stuff's already dry. It dries fast. All right, Carlos, see what you got, buddy. Okay. There we go. The technique that Carlos and I used was fantastic. We did the backsplashes and we kept everything random. We also followed a grain pattern and it really worked out well. All right, we're gonna hide a little bit of this man-madeness right here. We're just gonna use our black to erase some of that. Yeah. That makes that it look a little bit more nap. There we go. Yes. See that? Yep. 
Right, what did we do there where that spider web was in the corner and that spray just kind of wants to stick to the backsplash and the countertop? What do we do in that yeah, case? Yeah, so you just kind of karate chop it in. You yes. know? I mean, that's what it looked like we were doing, and you want to do it quickly. Let's you karate know? chop the camera. Boom! <laughs> you don't chop. So this, you almost want to push these down. Well, that looks good. So these cobwebs here, we're gonna get those right off with our hand. It Just let that dry and then come back and just scrape that off and it'll be a perfect edge. But it really bites to that paint really well. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. That edge looks legit. We saved the island for last because this is really nice. the focal point. Yeah, keep that grain exactly. Oh, oh hold on, just, just a little right here, and I think you're good, man. Yeah, put a little bit more, maybe. Yeah, exactly. And there's a bald spot in the front a little bit. Oh, Carlos, you're surgical with that, bro. <laughs> yeah. Using white, black, and silver marble spray, it's fun to step back and check your workout and make sure you love it before the epoxy process. That was fun, man. That was way fun. You did awesome. Dude, you, you're, you're a natural. I like your technique. I think we learned something really critical today. And what that is, is where we did a little bit too much because getting, it, getting that can into that backsplash, you can put a little too much on really quick, right? Yeah, it create, you know, it's hanging at those two high points. Right. The high point there and the low point there, and it's creating this triangle. Right. So, so, so what we did is we actually took that black and you're going black on black. So whatever your base is, that's important. And we hid some of it with the black and it looks more natural because it's fracturing those those fractured lines already, you know? Right, random fracturing. Yes. That's erasing it. Random orbital fracturing. <laughs> oh, <my gosh. laughs> All right, so we're gonna let this dry. We're gonna go, uh, go get some stuff done. We'll come back and it's time for the clear coat. Is that your favorite part? The easy part. Right. I love it. We did all that, you know, Fair, we're in North Pole, Alaska. We're actually where Santa lives, which is totally cool. Yeah. But North Pole does not get dark in the summertime. Yeah, it's six. It's right six o'clock. We can, uh, we're working all night, brother. I know. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> awesome. All right, here we go. All right, Carlos, we're ready for the clear coat. What's the clear coat gonna do to this finish right here? It's gonna give it a lot of depth and it's just gonna give it a neat look. You know, that only your eyes can appreciate. You know, this looks cool, but once you really put that clear coat on, that's where it comes to life. It's amazing what it honestly does. It takes it to the next level. Yes, it, it does. It, you know, you can't say it better than it brings it to life. It's like Frosty the Snowman getting his hat. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we actually extended this island right here, made it a little bit bigger on that side and this side and you can't really tell that we did that but there are some imperfections because we did some bondoing we have some rough sanding on there is that going to show through when we put the clear coat on oh you're not going to notice it no that's what's yeah. awesome about putting a clear you can do a bad job rolling your black paint and primer and one on and you put the clear on it looks like a grand piano <laughs> you know? it's that easy let's do it man you ready yeah let's do it all right you want to open the a i'll put the b in you put the a in all right we're going to do 64 i'll go to 32. On our flood coats, we're gonna use three ounces per square foot, and we're gonna mix it with the drill for two minutes. After you've mixed it, pour it on your surface, get it out of that bucket, and trowel it out using that 1 8 by 1 8 square notch trowel. I feel like you're watching a video, Carlos. <laughs> but I'm an idiot. <laughs> now, when you trowel it out over just straight paint, you gotta just be delicate. Right. A lot more delicate right. almost. Then. Here I'm using light pressure to trowel our epoxy right. out, and Carlos will follow up and chop the surface using our chop brush. After he's done chopping the surface, he'll brush those edges with long strokes. And then turn your brush. It's also important to brush out the backsplash the same way that you do those front edges. Now it's time to do the island in the same form and fashion. Boy, this comes out nice. It's great to have extra sets of hands when doing a project so that you don't feel overwhelmed with any one step. 
After I'm done troweling out the epoxy on the island, I'll scoop the excess in a bucket and Carlos can use that on the edges and backsplash. And then I'll bring this whole bead off and give it to Carlos to finish the backsplash with. Is this still the same day? You do have long days up here. <laughs> <laughs> now it's time to torch the bubbles out of the epoxy surface. Got my mustache. You did it? Mm hmm <laughs> You did it really? Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Did it, did it hurt? No, I just smell it. It's gonna be a great shot though. Sacrifice, bro. <laughs> After sweeping your entire project with the torch, wait a couple minutes and do it again. We'll do this three times and your epoxy will be crystal clear. We have a long working time and our epoxy is second to none. I love this effect, man. What do you think, Carlos? Oh, it's been awesome. Man, it, you know, we did the first coat of our clear. You're gonna come back tomorrow. You're gonna sand, especially on these edges. When you use that effect with that Montana marble spray, it creates minute high and low points. So sometimes you'll get a little surface tension here and there. We went through, we brushed all those edges horizontally. We used our hand. Is that what you typically do when you're doing your installs? Oh yeah, absolutely. That's the go-to. How much does that help, man? Oh, it makes all the difference, absolutely, yeah. So you brushed out those, those uh, backsplashes. How'd that go for you when, when we had that same effect in the backsplash versus the surface? Oh, it's it just as simple. Right? It's too simple. I love you it, know, man. There's nothing to it, yeah. I love it. I love doing backsplash that way because it's stress-free. Also, you can use those granite effects and pre-spray this with a granite effect spray. Same concept if you're doing inside a sink. Same concept. Lay your color down first and then clear coat it and boom, <laughs> you got your piece. It's awesome, man. yeah. You know, you can't believe how good it comes out. It's like... This is so DIY friendly. Yes, I got something for you, man. You are doing amazing. Thank you for using our products. Thank you for dominating Arizona. And from what I understand, you know, Mitch and I, we went to a Home Depot when we got here. Of course, that's what you do when you go somewhere. You go to Home Depot, right? <laughs> we go to Home Depot and we saw what they charge for granite. What are they charging for granite here oh. in, in Alaska? It's north of 100. I mean, it is insane what those prices are, and Carlos knows there's a niche to be filled in Alaska, so watch out. I think he's going to be installing <laughs> Stone Coat countertops in Alaska. <laughs> AT to AK. <laughs> yes, sir. So you have earned yourself one of our coveted t-shirts, oh, man, gosh. because you got this, man. Yes. All right, Carlos. That's awesome. <laughs> All right, man. Yes. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video on how we applied Montana Marble Spray over your existing laminate countertops with integrated backsplash. That's a tongueful, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks for watching. Visit our website anytime at stonecoatcountertops.com. Give us a thumbs up if you like this content and it provided you some value. Go ahead and share it with your friends. Let them know how awesome Stone Coat Countertops is. Carlos, how can people find you? They can call me at 928-255-3959 or go on our Facebook, Countertop Da Vinci, uh, on Facebook. So. All right, man. Hey, they're going to call you. Have they been calling? Absolutely. Yeah, they actually <laughs> really have. You know, uh, people have come over. They're like, you know, what's going on with this stuff? And it's amazing, you know, so come on over. You know, we talked about it in the podcast. We said we got to get together. I got to see what you got. And this was blast. Thanks for inviting me out to here to Alaska, man. Thank Give you. me a hug, dude. Thank You're the man. You. We're, 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 this seriously has been awesome. It has, man. <laughs> we'll do it again. Yeah. Uh, guys, again, thanks for watching. And until next time, from Stoke Coat Countertops, you got this. We'll talk to you soon. <laughs> All right. Nice. So that was awesome. Nice job. Subscribe to our channel, baby. Woo! Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm having too much fun, dude. All right. Okay, we've got the clear coat down. Everything's finished on day one. Can you believe we did that all in one day? Well, we had a great team. What time is it right now, man? Uh, 
It's 9:05. It's 9:05 p.m. <laughs> we. It's 9:05 p.m. and it and it looks like it's you know three o'clock in the afternoon here in the North Pole or the land of the midnight sun. Yes. Okay. You know? So we're gonna let all that dry, Carlos. You're gonna come back tomorrow. You're gonna sand it. You're gonna uh, apply your second clear coat. That will remove any little imperfections on those edges. We'll get that done. You're gonna send me pictures of what that looks like. Ho ho ho! Holy. Cow, that was an awesome countertop. We are 100 miles from the Arctic Circle. We just saw North Pole, Alaska. We're in a sleigh. I don't think this is Santa's sleigh. <laughs> it could be a, a replica. <laughs> if this is Santa's sleigh, he needs a bigger budget, man. Yeah. <laughs> right. We can't be a comedy crew. <laughs> no, this goes after everything. If they keep watching, they get the bonus this features. Santa is creepy, bro. Look at that thing. I don't like Santa, guys. But I do like stone coat countertops. <laughs> All, right. All right, let's wrap it up. Guys, we can't wait to send you our next project. Make sure you subscribe below. Subscribe! <laughs> Never miss another project from stonecoatcountertops.com. We'll see you soon. Remember, when you subscribe to our channel, click on the red subscribe button and be sure to ring the bell so you get notified every time we have a new video. Thanks again. All right, Troy, my man, this was awesome. Yeah. Thanks for having us out to your house here in Alaska. Tell me what you thought of this process, man. Well, I, you know, got to be honest with you, I was, I was a little scared, you know, probably like most people. Sure, of <laughs> Don't course. Know what you're gonna get. I mean, when you go to see granite, you see what you're gonna get. Right. Here, you don't necessarily see that, but I'm a risk taker. Yes, sir. And I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the whole process, and it. It performed. I mean, it came out, and it's it's awesome. I mean, I I am so happy that we got this because it's it looks like a million bucks. I mean, it, it's it's perfect. You know, you you flip houses, and yeah. uh, you've showed me some of your work, and they're awesome. Would you say this is a good product for house flippers? Yeah, for sure, because it's cost effective. Right. Because you have to you have to stay within your budget when you're flipping houses. You can't break the budget. If you do, it's dollar out of your pocket. Right. So right. if you stay within the budget, you're going to make more money at the, at the end of the process. So this is definitely a cost-effective product product compared to the other alternatives that we were, had here in Alaska which, you know, granite was like you know, 115 bucks a square foot man so man you know i was like wow well i guess i'm not doing granite here <laughs> you know and and carlos is going to come back and after this is set up he's going to hone it and take the sheen level down to make it look like hone marble if you like it now i guarantee you you're going to like it when it's honed i'll be happy all right man hey troy thanks a lot troy invited us back up you might see me and the kids come back to alaska we're going to go do something tomorrow thanks again man and, the and remember if you write santa claus a letter to north pole alaska 99705 zip code santa claus 99705 that's all it's got to be on there he's really here he's really here and he will write you back yes he will write you back a letter santa claus is coming to town that's right yeah.